with my voice, I probably don't need a mic. I've yelled at six kids all my life. <laughs> uh, I'm going to explain him O'Rourke to the younger people that uh, never got the great chance to meet him. Uh, Emo served about six or seven clubs in Iowa, always in Iowa. Uh, he finished nine years at Shenandoah, and then he settled in Schaefer Memorial in Fort Madison. He was there 23 years. He was a, a manager, a superintendent, and a great golf pro. But uh, when I was asked to do this, uh, because of Jerry being sick, uh, I jumped at it, even though it's a damn long drive for me at my age. Uh, the, uh, I, when I found out about this, I called Rod, Rod Rogers, who succeeded evil at Fort Madison, and kind of get his perspective. He said he was so helpful when I took over the, the uh, course and he even stayed several years and helped with the junior lessons. Emil passed away at age 89. He loved Iowa golf. He loved, if there's an old saying, if you ever read Harvey Pinnick, if you play golf, you're a friend of mine. That was Emil Rohr. Uh, I got two letters uh, who uh, backed Emil going into the uh, Hall of Fame. Uh, one of them was Hall of Fame member Jack Webb. Uh, the other was from Rod Rogers, who followed him. And both of them agreed that he was the backbone of keeping the Iowa PGA going. We were in rough times in the early 70s. And Emo served two terms as president, twice was golf professional of the year. He uh, won uh, two Horton Smiths Award for education. He uh, served as treasurer, secretary, and tournament chairman at various times. Emo was always there when you needed him. And, uh, but Emo had one fault. And the ones that know him from the Iowa PJ know it. He told the worst, cor corniest of jokes <laughs> ever. And he always started a meeting with one. And usually ended with one. And they were groaners, that's what I call them. <laughs> and I'll give you an example. <laughs> the hunchback of Notre Dame died. So they had to find a replacement. So this guy approached him on scene and he says, I can ring those bells. He said, well, you're pretty tall and those bells come back fast. you got to be able to get out of the way. He said, I can handle it. I can handle it. So the first time he had to ring the bells, sure enough, Lung ball, bells over, the big one came back in and they had knocked him out of the tower on the ground. Big crowd developed around him. And then the gendarme walked up. He says, anybody know this fella? No, but he sure rings a bell. <laughs> That's him. <laughs> Another thing was he liked him, Jim. Even though he worked hard, he he enjoyed it. I was standing outside his pro shop one day, took my boy down there to play Schaefer, and Emo and I were talking, and a guy walked up, one of his members, whistling. And he looked at him and he says, you can sure tell he hasn't played yet. <laughs> <laughs> Another thing he used to do is to keep a sign every once in a while in the pro shop. Arnold Palmer will not be here today. <laughs> well, of course, he wasn't going to be there any day. Uh, stay on this train. When he retired, I wanted to get him a gift, as a lot of us did. And I bought him, went to Borders, and got a joke book, two-volume joke book. You know, you buy them at Borders, you figure they're innocuous. And I sent a note with it. He said, uh, Maybe uh, this has improved some of your jokes that you've been telling lately. Got a new old fun. Three days later, I get a call from him. his wife. Opened him, said they were the dirtiest stories you've ever heard. <laughs> I, they were in cellophane. I didn't know. Uh, Emil brought a traveling group around every month in different places. Always came to Emil's. 
a diverse group you've never seen. A lot of railroad men, a lot of businessmen, uh, some professional people, uh, guys with name of uh, nickname of like Flat Wheel. Uh, so they and they were the most organized group. Everybody had their starting place. Everybody had their, their uh, were there on time, and then they went out to eat afterwards. It was everybody looked forward to it. Be twenty five or thirty guys. We usually give them a reverse shotgun start. If I have to explain that to you. Uh, well, take an hour after. Uh, <laughs> uh, as a Hall of Fame member, Jack Webb sent in his nominating letter. He was considered the strongest member of the section. Even after he held no office, he was there for you every time. Uh, the, the guys that. Uh, that are uh, ignoring him, counted as a blessing. I knew two great people in golf that I associated with a lot. One was Emo, one was Bob Fry, who taught who brought me up. And he was he's also a Hall of Fame member. Two nicer people you will never meet. And but Bob didn't tell bad jokes. <laughs> the reason why he didn't, he didn't tell jokes. Uh, the, we're ending the meeting now. So we almost got to tell another joke. To end the meeting. So after the first guy went out of the tower and died, his brother came and asked for the job from the monsoon. And he said, well, you don't want to do that. Your brother just got killed by that bell, that big bell. He said, well, I'm shorter and I'm faster. I can handle it. Well, after much back and forth, that I didn't try it. Sure enough, the first one time he pushed it, came back and hit him, knocked him out of the tower. Same, same group of people gathered around him. The gendarme walks up. Anybody know who that is? He says, no, but he's a dead ringer for that guy yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> so that's, uh, that's what you got with him. A dedicated man more I've never known. Uh, I had a degree of superintendent who was supposed to be up here to accept the award, take it back to the club. And uh, he called me up today and said that uh, he was having all kinds of water problems on the course he couldn't leave. So uh, Doug Friend was his name, is his name. And Doug told me that when he first got there, he didn't really get along too well with him. Really. He said, I don't know why. He says, later on, I was his best friend and was a ball bearer at the funeral. So he won't do that to you. <laughs> Bobby Morrow, would you come up and accept the plaque? Oh, that's sweet. Or anyone? I don't know anymore. Worse than <laughs> you have. I told you. Uh, but for those folks who didn't know him, he was a great guy. I mean, everybody that knows him, you know, he was a very unusual man, and I, I, everybody be proud of him. Yeah. Yeah. That's all I have to say.